And I had to do a lot of unlearning by way of other people's bad behaviors, but also, again, what I was taught. And I know you've seen it just a week or what, maybe two weeks ago, I tweeted and said, Black men, y'all the main ones that encourage the very thing you hate. What's up, Brave Hearts community? This is Sean Heineman, your premier pre-engagement coach, back with another segment of A Scary Terry Mary wanting you to love fearlessly. We have a special guest in the house. But this show is going to be amazing because our guest has went viral, has been controversial somewhat. We'll talk about that as well. Uh, but we're also going to talk about her video and African-Americans being the least married of any major uh, racial or ethnic group in America. And we're going to like really dive in with that. So I'm excited about having our special guest, social media influencer, Paris. How are you doing this evening? Doing good. Thank you so much for having me. I'm happy that I crossed paths with you because... I remember I was just looking one day, scrolling my timeline. They got this crazy new algorithm. I'm like, oh, he cooking. <laughs> so I was like, I don't know what you was tweeting about. But it was one of the days that I'm talking about you were making sense. And I'm like, I like this. So, <laughs> and it was, it was even more impressive because I do this thing where even if I don't agree with something, I won't engage with the I'll retweet it to see what the feedback is. But in your particular sector, I retweeted it and then I kept like following up and like I bookmarked and I watched like how you were curving everybody's responses and like making it make sense. And I was just like, oh, this is this is this is hot gold, like for real, like even with like looking at your bio and I remember exactly what the tweet was, but I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely rocking with this. I like this. I hope that you're the one And that you are the prototype Well, I'm honored, first of all, because I would like to say that, because, uh, you know, of course, we Twitter buddies. So every time you retweet something that I post, I end up getting a bunch of followers and a bunch of comments. And I'm just like, Oh my God, like mm -hmm. she has influence for real, for real. Mm -hmm. Funny thing, before we go any further, because we kicking it now. <laughs> we already <laughs> kicking it. Yeah. I the video that went viral, I sent it to my wife one day and we talked about it, but I didn't know that was you on Twitter. Really? Yeah. So I'm like, wait a minute, we've been following each other. Oh, that's that, that that's is. that's what I get often. Um my Twitter is more so wide range because I'm interacting there and I can like live gravitate and get out my thoughts in real time and, and engulf with people differently. Like the engagement is much more different as Facebook, you know, or Instagram or, um, you know, even Big O. I do have a, uh, you know, streaming sector with Big O now. People can click the link in any bio on any page that you follow me on. And um, also, TikTok. I'm not a live person. I don't go live to talk to people often, um, but you get more of a diversified thing on Twitter. So a lot of times when people find me on any other platform, they go, I did not know that were you. <laughs> like, hey, yeah, this is her. But it, it matches across the board because on every single platform, there is a following. Mm -hmm. yeah i was just like oh my god i was tripping up it. i was like oh my god so that's when i hit you in the inbox i was like wait a minute because i've been following your content for a while and i'm like i got to have you on the show so thanks again for uh, so spending good. some time on the platform because you're gonna help somebody today i hope so that's what i'm here for people <laughs> think i'm harmful but i really don't mean harm. you don't mean any harm what what inspired you to create the video why black women are the least married and then the second part went viral so talk about that what what inspired you to write uh to create that video there was this video of the white girls at a graduation one thing about me i as you know i'm the content creator 
So a lot of times people will get hype about certain things that they're seeing, like from TikTok, or they'll start like having different type of conversations. And this one video kept circulating, circulating, circulating about the white girls at the graduation. And I'm really not a reaction content creator. I'm a create the content person. As mm -hmm. you see, some days I've literally had whole, I've had people arguing about one thing on every spectrum of Twitter and I'm nowhere around. <laughs> and they're like, I'm just randomly tweeting. And I saw that video. It was day three. I'll never forget it because the person kept like popping up, popping up. It was day three of that video circulating. I never engaged with it. I never said nothing about it because I'm just like, I don't care that much. And then I was up getting ready to go to the gym and I um tweeted, when I get back from the gym, I'm going to tell y'all why Black women are the least mayor. And then, because I have been creating content and videos and things like that, and I tend to be more active on Twitter than the other places, I go, I'm going to post this as a real. I'm going to make it real brief, wrap it up real fast. And um, I posted part one as a real. Part one literally had people in a frenzy. Oh, I'm talking about they were upset. It wasn't just women, though. It was some of the men that were like, black women have a right to just exist. And they always, you know, everybody has something to say and da, 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 da. And so when I went back to do part two, I knew part two was going to piss people off because I doubled down on what I said. But it made it worthwhile for the conversation because I've seen that video everywhere and that video was posted in january we're in may that video is still getting attention and traction i can say even after having my running with celebrities and after having you know my own thing going on that is the most viral time i've ever been i was everywhere i'm still everywhere and it's it, it's refreshing to see that i started that type of conversation even if people received it or they did it. Mm. Yeah, that's good because I mean you hit all points. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like you you didn't miss anything. And I agree with everything. Cause I remember showing my wife the video. I was like, man, she preaching. Like you went in on I think you had like three points. And yeah. um it really didn't take much. It didn't yeah. take much because I feel like a lot of times people try to drag stuff out. It don't take much. And then um it's not necessarily about gravitating the audience or losing the audience. It's just really that, I mean, a lot of this stuff is overcomplicated for no reason. And it, it makes it worthwhile every conversation because I come from a two-parent household. In a lot of ways, I'm your American anomaly. Mm. Yeah, because there was, I, I started looking at some of the comments and I was just like, okay, let me come off of here because I wanted to jump in all the comments. I want I want to talk about everything. Nah, I, I, I ain't gonna hold you. I, I'd have made some. I'd have made some hot content, but that one, that that one hit. It triggered people. It triggered like it triggered the masses. Like, how dare she? I can't believe as a oversized because you know I do keep myself in shape. Um, a oversized black woman. Um, she's dark skin. She has four C hair. How dare she? You know, I'm I'm the ideal of what society is perpetuating to be undesirable, or at least the idea that comes across online. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I mean, and, and the interesting thing is I didn't look at that perspective from you at all. Mm -hmm. I just looked at as a woman teaching truth. Right. But you know then we got other women who are, have attempted to take the same route. One of the most honorable comparisons that I get all the time. And if I ever had the opportunity to meet them, I would take it in a heartbeat. Sharza Ali. Mm -hmm. That is one of the most thorough comparisons I get. Like, um, there are a couple other women out who I really admire. Erica, um, Chez, um, it, it Chez, it's 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 uh Kita Rose, like it's the other Kita nurse, Kita, Dana mm -hmm. Day. Um it's um Erica versus Erica, E versus Erica. It's her. It's a lot of other women who have such a broad platform that do speak in a certain type of way. Or um, I forgot her name, 
but she has like a fro and she's really holistic and stuff like that. It's again, there's a lot of other women or even Didi, the Crimson Red, if we're talking YouTube, yeah. I really do admire their content because you don't find a lot of women who are going to say what they want and stand on what they say unapologetically, especially when it being a black woman. Like we got too many who will just say anything for the masses because they want to coat everybody's feelings or they want to be likable. They want to be popular. And one thing that I can say about the women that I named admirability and validation is the least of their concern. But when people hear us speak and I know I have a different perspective than other people. And, um, I would have to say between me, Keita Rose and Dana, mm -hmm. I've worked with Keita Rose. I love those two women. Even if I watch their content and I never agree, I love those two women because of the fact that they're they're based off of the principality of their message. And you can tell the content is it because they're trying to draw an audience, but because they don't they don't just rock with no anything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and I love people that's being their authentic self. Just be who you are. You know, and that's what I love. There's no guessing, there's no ambiguity. Mm -hmm. It's like you are who you are. If people meet my wife and I in person, like we celebrities or anything, but like, exactly. if we, yeah, if we were on social media and then you seen us in person, people be like, oh, y'all cool in real life. I'm like, we're people. Yeah. Like, what's the big deal? Or it's so? not because you had one disagreement with me when you met me in real life. We weren't going to be a vibe. <laughs> <laughs> now, I do got a question for you. What's up? What was your wife's response to what I said? Do you recall? She was. She was just like. She was like, oh, like she's she's just telling it like it is because there's so much fluff on social media. You know what I'm saying? So she was almost like shocked, like flabbergasted. Yeah, sure. like oh, like somebody's really speaking real, you know. <clears throat> but a lot of times it's easy to get online and say what everybody likes, get a you know a whole Drop bunch of likes and follow. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So your content was was fresh. I, mm -hmm. I appreciate that for sure. Uh, OK, we talk about African-Americans are being the least married of any major uh, racial and ethnic group in America. Why is that? Honestly, I think it is more so of a mentality. I think mm -hmm. it's psychologically taught. I don't think it has anything to do with black women wanting to be strong or independent. Um, I don't think it has anything to do with black women and our attitudes. I don't think it has anything to do with uh, us being loud or the overweight thing. Like all of those in theory, they could be subsectors under the umbrella, mm -hmm. but it's ideally like we're taught to play game. Mm -hmm. We're taught game. And even when you listen, like I, I've been hearing all my life because I grew up around a lot of boys. Um, even when Tupac said it, you learn game from a woman. Best game you get is from a woman. Mm -hmm. We've been learning this a long time. And I will always feel a certain type of way about the baby boomer generation and the generation before me, my parents' generation, if I'm being candid, because those women, you did what you had to do. Ain't no excuse for us to have to go the same route. We got way too many other successors that could set us on a path of betterment. And that's not what you taught. I always tell people, you don't hear men in conversations with women telling men, telling women, if you don't get it from somebody, if he don't get it from you, he's gonna get it from somebody else. You hear that from women telling women that. Mm -hmm. And you don't hear um men telling women deal with any type of man or put up with that. You hear women telling other women, like, if you love them, stick it out, et cetera, et cetera. Or you hear women telling women, girl, fuck him. He ain't shit. Like, the moment that you have problems, et cetera, et cetera. Like, there is no real logical solution to how we talk to each other. It's always an extreme. Mm. And it's problematic because we influence each other very, very heavily. And I made a joke one time on Twitter and I was like, I remember when women used to have um, hobbies. We don't have hobbies no more. Our hobbies turned into 
monetary collection. But we used to have women who used to knit for fun, do baking um, show events or bake-offs. We used to have women who used to put pageants together. We used to have women who were, you know, actually do something that encouraged us to have teamwork skills and be amongst each other and wanted to, like, be around each other. We don't have those things anymore. And now times when women are getting together, it's for a turn up because you've been separated so long or it's for you to, you know, make money. And I don't really like, where's the joy in that? Where's the incitement in it? Like mm -hmm. women don't do anything in our generation past being in college that requires teamwork or being at work. It don't require any type of leadership. Um, ability to have the one under the other everything is individualism whereas men in our society to a degree everything you guys do it requires some form of teamwork not mm. us even now our beauty shops the move to the house mm. y'all barbershop yeah you might be on call with a barber etc cetera, etc cetera, but a lot of times you know, you find men who get into different networking things with each other. A lot of times your barber is a, a business partner, too. Or, you know, you find somebody who is ladder up. We, we don't we don't utilize each other that way anymore. We just mm -hmm. outservice everything from everybody else. We got a friend we kick with. We got a friend we go do this. We got a friend we go do that. We, we got a friend we make money with. You know, nothing is like actually sectored to the point where we're utilizing each other as a real tool as opposed in a resource, as opposed to just a fun time or a money-making asset. And you have to be able to value people past just finances. We mm. don't do that. Mm -hmm. I agree. But I do have a question too. So are you saying that men have more of a community than women? Absolutely. Really? And you know, it's crazy. I say this all the time to people. People don't think about it until I say it. They always talk about Black men in the most negative light. They always say, oh, they kill each other and they do this, they do that, they do this. I promise you right now, if a Black man want to build the business, he's going to get more support from a man than anybody else. Another Black man. Black men are the only demographic who are collectively bridging the gap with each other. You guys are the least cooperative when it comes to the United States government in every sector, the least to vote, the least to participate in the census, the least to cooperate with the police enforcement, mm -hmm. um, even when it comes down to us and the women. Yeah, you got disagreements and disparaging you know, views when it comes to us, sometimes depending on each other, but overall, men get more support from men. Men will go and see another man show up to the same gym two weeks in a row and that that whole interaction will go from to what's up bro how you doing hey you want to go out and get drinks after this and it is literally that like there is no extra put on it there is no anything or um you know it's, it's just that it's literally just a genuine interaction and with women it's you're pretty let's be friends i see you on your stuff let me go. I want to support a, a, a popping black woman. And it's like, well, what about the woman that wasn't so attractive to you? Why can't you be her friend? You know, and it, it, it's, it's always a way to validate the friendship is never just genuine. So absolutely. Like you will find men who have a small sector of friends and they're able to make things happen a lot more successful than you are when it comes to you know, just women in our friendship groups or our community networks. So yes, men have better community than women. We may execute both at the same speed or rate or whatever, get things together. But as far as community mindedness, mm -hmm. men are more family oriented and more community minded than women. Mm -hmm. You see it in the numbers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, it's interesting because like if I take my kids to a checkup or they got a doctor's appointment, <clears throat> a lot of times I see black men in there with their kids. But that's not the narrative. I know, right? I know. The narrative is dads don't know anything about their kids' doctor's appointments. Dads barely know their kids' birthday. Dads aren't as present or as active or I've been to work all day and then I have to come home and not only do I have to have the food ready, but I got to take care of your kids and 
that's the narrative. The narrative is that men are not as interactive or not as as as, as hands on, or even if they're present, it's not active. And mm -hmm. I just never can rock with that because I come from a family where on my dad's side, every man, and I say this often, every man minus three, four, minus four. Mm -hmm. Every man is married. Every mm -hmm. man minus four. Mm -hmm. Two of those being my brother, one of them being my uncle, and the other one being my little cousin. Mm -hmm. Every mm -hmm. other man is married. Mm -hmm. And what I saw when we had family events, we got together because of the men. Mm -hmm. Even now, like everything came together. And you will see, like, when it comes to the event planning, for me, what I noticed was things got more organized and they were far more successfully executed when you had the men doing them versus on my mom's side of the family is mainly women. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, it's always, you know, a, a very different dynamic. Mm -hmm. Not saying things don't get done, but you can tell the difference. Like you can really tell how things are getting done differently when it comes to the financial portion, the organizational part, like, who is actually executing doing what they're supposed to do according to what was supposed to be done. So yeah, like you do, the narrative is you don't see a lot of men present for their children or active in their families. And I just, I can't respect it because my dad, he gave my mom the option to work. He gave my mom the option to cook. He gave my mom the option to kind of like do whatever. Like, I don't, I don't, you know, honestly, when, he showed her appreciation. He showed it to her in grandiose gestures. Mm -hmm. He showed it to her in ways that, you know, it was very significant to how she would, she was improving his life. But mm -hmm. I, I have, I have a dad where whatever we became interested in, he became interested in. So yeah. that's what I see. And I'm not saying that other people don't have a different experience, but I am saying based off of my environment and my observations, and I I don't I don't allow that narrative to shape shift my mental or the way that I perceive black men because I know better, I know what's out here, and I know what can be done. Mm, I love that. I love that. That's just bars on top of bars. <laughs> Who inspired you to become the woman that you are today? My daddy. Yeah. Daddy's girl. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we had to have a very tough conversation. Me and my dad. Like I'm talking about, I was I'm not a crier unless it comes to like my daddy for real. Mm -hmm. I was on the phone boo-hoo and crying. And I was like frustrated with him because as my platform is taking off, it's for it's forcing me to recognize some of the poisonous antidotal things that are happening in society and also the influential negativity like it it one thing about me I ain't gonna I ain't gonna harp on something if I can't live it so when I talk about things I'm practicing what I preach that's why a lot of times the insults they're kind of like it thick skin yeah you can say I got thick thick skin but you also it's more so of a thing where it's like, this don't hit because it don't apply. So the mm -hmm. insults just kind of roll off my back. But I sat down and I was like, um, going through something at the time with my boyfriend. Mm -hmm. And um, my dad was getting to the point where he just was like pressuring me to like, hey, you know, I want to meet him. And when are you going to have my grandbabies? And, mm -hmm. you know, like, it just kind of got to the real grown folks conversation of like, okay, well, I've watched you go through this point of life and you've made it this far and you've become this successful. Like, what does next steps look like for you? And I really had to tell him like, you know what? You made it so hard for me to just really know how to want a man. Mm -hmm. And he didn't really want to accept it. And that went back and forth, you know, for quite some time about like, you you could have did this and you and it was like eventually like one thing I love about my dad is he gonna hear me out so even if it's hard for him to receive something he's gonna eventually like if it's frustrating me he's gonna stop and then he's gonna hear me out 
and be accountable for it. And mm-hmm. so that conversation went on for like two hours and I finally got to the point where I'm telling him like that. I had such a hard time like dating. I, I never dated until I went to college. I never had the opportunity to just really like a boy because you you didn't think that that was something that was appropriate. You wanted me to focus on school. You wanted me to be responsible. You wanted me to do all these things. And I'm just like, well, I was a, a stellar student. I mm-hmm. didn't get pregnant in high school. I was always involved in everything. I was everywhere all the time. Like I traveled. I you know, I've seen a lot of different things. I had a lot of different experiences. And then for you to wake up one day, like, where is your big happy family? As if you weren't part of the reason why I was deterred away from that reality. It is kind of hypocritical. But he received what I said. He apologized. And that strengthened how I navigated my situation with my current my current relationship. Mm-hmm. Because I had to do a lot of unlearning. And I had to do a lot of unlearning by way of other people's bad behaviors, but also, again, what I was taught. And I know you've seen it just a week or maybe two weeks ago. I tweeted and said, black men, y'all the main ones that encourage the very thing you hate. Yeah, I've seen that. And I mean (laughs) that. Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, because, yeah. I'm going to shelf that conversation because that's something I would like to talk about. I'm going to shelf that, though, because there's some other stuff that I want to ask you. There's so much I want to ask you. Uh, from from your angle, do Black women, do they desire marriage by today's standards? Or is it just more of like, I'm, you know, I'm just going to do me? Because like, to me, I see marriage as something that's almost kind of like, it's almost kind of, I won't say outdated, but it's almost controversial now to be married. Like, live your life. You know what weird. I'm saying? Yeah. It's so weird. I actually said that. I'm going to answer your question, but I said mm-hmm. the same thing about a woman being happy in a relationship. I was talking in a, a Twitter space, and I was just basically saying, like, women who have had terrible experiences with men, they speak out loud in front of all the other women at the moment that they see somebody happy to kind of, like, dim their light. And it's like, They speak almost with this hurt, hatred and disdain as if other women have had terrible experiences. The difference between me and you is I healed. I didn't allow that to shape shift the way that I think about love. And I didn't allow that to stop because I'm just such in a unself-aware denial about my reality and what I desire in relationships. So as far as Black women and do we desire marriage? I think it's cap. Absolutely. I think majority of women still desire marriage. When you see a lot of the um, content that comes up when, if you're, if you're just paying attention, right? Some of the same women who will uh, sit there and down and bash, oh, me and married ain't nothing, et cetera, et cetera. When they see somebody getting ready to get married, they right there with their hoorah. They're cheering on. And it's like, hmm, interesting. And I remember um, about, it had to be earlier this year. It had to be at the top of this year. Mm. Um, there is a African Twitter influencer. I want to say her name is like Ola something. Mm-hmm. But her basic platform was built like way from 2019 her just telling women like you don't need a man and go on and take care of yourself and I, I I remember it it was so it was so comical to me because she has like um 50,000 followers or so the majority of it is women and she's mm-hmm. like I said she's African and she posted that um she was a fiance she was getting married mm-hmm. and I went and pulled like five four or five tweets but it was like a thread of them I had um two different tweets Mm -hmm. and it was just showing like how she I I don't never want marriage and I don't need a man and it was just very much so callous and I'm like this is so funny how you're sitting here using your platform to say these things but your reality don't reflect like can we be serious people I want us to be serious people because these same women who sat there and they troped with you and they who rod you all the way down the he man's hater club. Now they're sitting here in your comments and they're proud for you. But what about the ones who actually thought something else of you? 
because you're lying. Mm -hmm. Your your reality don't reflect. Like you're sitting here pretending that you're having such this terrible time the whole time. You don't mention the love of your life, and things are you know picture perfect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what are we really doing here? We're just lying, and we're really talking against what we say we don't want just so we can probably draw, draw it to us. I think it's a mind trick thing. That's what mm -hmm. I honestly think. Because the more you're anti-something, you really are trying to attract it to you. There's no way to be this anti-something and then you you know that it's going to cross your path. Like You can't stop being in love. Mm -hmm. Unless you never walk outside, you're going to meet somebody. Unless you never walk outside. Yes, you can be single for years and years on end, but even when you would have like those uh, television shows, like with the Uncle Jesse's, Uncle mm -hmm. Jesse was running through woman after woman after woman after woman. He was always a bachelor. He was always, you know, the bachelor on the family uh, full house. Mm -hmm. And eventually he found that one woman and it changed his, you know, it, it's like that may not be the Becky, may not be everybody, but you will find that, you know, most people are going to be Uncle Jesse. You're going to keep running out the person, out the person, out the person. Like you're, you're still going to find a person. You can't avoid these things, regardless of how much you're finding a disdain for that hurtful feeling that you're getting from being disappointed. Women want marriage. If you mm -hmm. ask a woman right now, she know exactly how she wants to be married. She know um, what her reign wants to look like. She knows whether or not she wants the actual reception or mm -hmm. she knows all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. She just wants the man. The right man, she knows, and she mm. wants it. Mm. That's good. I, I yeah, I totally agree because they have the little meme, the one where it's like the the guy talking and the girl talking, and they have like a little speech bubble, and the, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> they have so many different little images and stuff that they say is Sammy cracking up. You know, it's like, do you desire marriage? And then on the the one pick or something is like. Uh, the guy is oh no the woman is saying a whole bunch of hateful stuff but her man is like laying up under her you know and she's like on social media like going off or whatever like i can't stand yeah. man but her man her man is laying up under her. and that's so common and i will see it all the time where you will have women who are online like going in like talking crazy like whether it's something that they saw that triggered them from their past or whether it was just something that had nothing to do with the price of tea in China or the Russia fighting Ukraine. And they sitting there just running their mouth. And I'm like, when y'all do this, right? What do you think the man next to you is thinking? Mm. Like, honestly, he, he may not care that it's not affecting his household, but to a degree, you you kind of cheating. You kind of violate. You really violate because if you're willing to get online and say disparage your comments and I have to exclude myself to a degree because I'm actually an influencer. Mm -hmm. So what I'm doing online is not a reflection on my actual relationship. Like him and I have a good understanding. We had a very great lunch date today. Um, but when it comes to how women are like in the house with a man and they're allowed and proud on social media about like having an antithesis mm -hmm. mentality against men. Are you, are you happy or is this a character you're playing? Like, is this, is this for attention? What's happening here? Because yes, relationships are hard work. Like they're hard. I don't care what type of relationship you have. Parent, child, friend, friend, mother, daughter, um, cousin, auntie, I, it doesn't matter. Every, your work relationships are hard. But when you're sitting there in a the house with someone that you chose to make an intimate partnership and you're saying that you love them, but every opportunity you get, you're sliding their gender or saying something in the anticipation that could be a, rep a perpetuation of you guys' relationship. Mm -hmm. Do you actually think that that's contributing to you having a healthy, successful, long-term relationship? And do you think that that looks like respect for your partner? Yeah. Yeah, because I, I do believe a lot of people are into, this is my social media life and this is my yeah, real life. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. So know. again, that draws me back to my other question. Mm-hmm. Are you looking for attention? Are you trying to get validation in another area? Mm-hmm. Because in reality, unless you are a social media influencer, and depending on what your brand is, some stuff you probably should stay away from. And not because you can't contribute, but because if you're actually thinking about healing and, you know, being a better foresighted individual, it don't really help, you know, you as an individual because you people don't cold switch the way that they think they do. Mm-hmm. You can't turn some things on and off. It's either you feel like this or you don't, you know? So it's like eventually after two or three times, I'm like, okay, that's, you know, it is what it is. But when you, when you're constantly tweeting about things for months on end or you're constantly making certain content or drawing or posting certain content, it's like, no, you like this. You're tailoring your algorithm. We know how algorithms work. So if I see you on Instagram and the things that you're posting, even if it's just in your story are the Justin LaBoy post, you know, and he has some very different, you know, posts. Whether it's yeah, I'm gonna um I'm gonna talk crazy on social media, but I'm gonna get up and go make a sandwich, you know, and it's like what what is the purpose? Because mm-hmm. again, are you trying to get attention or is there really something going on in your situation? Eventually you have to be able to suit with yourself and come to an understanding because if some of these men got online and said how they actually feel or what they were going through, a lot of these women would be extremely embarrassed. Mm, yeah, because people will pull up tweets. They will, they will. More times often than not, those relationship posts, mm-hmm. whether it's um, Niggas Be Broke Okay, that page, or Justin LaBoy, or that Kalani page that's on Twitter, or some mm-hmm. of the main meme pages, mm-hmm. even the relationship one-on-ones, majority of those are tailored to women. Mm. Mm-hmm. Majority of those are tailored to what women desire. And that's one of the reasons why brands and platforms like mine won't be as popular for the masses because anytime you're talking about relationships, the main perpetrator who's going to draw their audience, that's a woman's thing. Mm-hmm. That's a woman's thing. Women have a hard time learning how to coexist in dealing in relationships. They want to figure it out. They want to um they want to dissect men. They want to be able to crack the code. Why can't we get it? Why can't you know? And it it's it's really not that difficult. You're doing everything except listening to the man. Because mm-hmm. the moment that men start talking is take these microphones away. <laughs> We just gonna keep it in the women's circle. I don't want to hear nothing else you guys say. Hey, they don't know what they're talking about now. <laughs> Go ahead and turn that Steve Harvey on, even though he's been married three times and you know he take care of everybody else's kids and stuff for his primaries. That's not an issue. It's the fact that he loves Marjorie, baby. Take them other microphones away and turn on that Derek Jackson so I can make <laughs> sure that I'm getting uplifting and I'm being positive and you know, I know he cheated on his wife, but he fine. And he say the stuff that I need him to say to coast my ego. Take that stuff away. I want to I wanna hear somebody who's going to tell me something that I want to hear. And, you know, Oprah used to be that girl for them. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. And, and by today's standards, you know, you, it's almost like you got to watch what you say sometimes. Because and I'm not going to do that. Yeah. But, but, <laughs> but here's the thing. Here's the thing. Because... I realized there was some stuff that I was I was about to say or even about to tweet or some things. My wife be like, "Wait a minute, why yeah, not just why not just do a video on it or why not you oh, know yeah. what I'm saying just some other stuff so things don't be misconstrued because I, a lot I of mean, times when people are reading, they read with their own yep interpretation and they take it you know the way that it came out of my head wasn't yeah. how it came out of your head and then now I'm getting to think piece because you decided to interpret this as an insult and I just wanted to laugh and it was very funny when I thought about it or I just you know had this bulb this light bulb moment and now I, I can't even be really just proud of my light bulb moment because here you are the Debbie Downer and you want to give me a think piece about how I, I probably am misogynist you know so 
yeah, I get it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, I'm 46 years old. I, I've, I've lived that life where people just called you out on what you were doing. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I've had mentors. I've had other men who would call me out on my mess if I was out there messing up. Like by today's standards, you know, everybody's just kind of like want to be nice and sweet and stuff like that. And that's why I appreciate your content because you tell it like it is. Yeah. And I'm, I'll be honest with you, despite me having a broad male audience, I do think a lot of times that they forget I'm still a woman. So they perceive me as this anomaly, like I don't have expectations of men. Like I'm so easy to deal with and she understands us. She gets it. She's perfect for me or she's not a headache or, you know, she just, she got it all put together. And it's like, no, I'm still a woman. And some of the things that women say are actually spot on. But some of the stuff that you guys have gripes about are common sense. And I found that a lot of men online tag behind certain people so they because they don't have the courage to say what they want to say and it, it comes out in if i say this they're gonna get mad mm -hmm. if i say this i'm gonna get canceled if i say this somebody that's like huh mm -hmm. like but you got all these balls in my comments you want to argue with women but if you you also want to say this but you don't have the courage to say and it and, and it it kind of perplexes me like come on now joe smoke are you gonna be serious yeah i know right no that's real because i still have expectations of men and i think a lot of times people forget that like i i still have like i'm i'm not a person that's just going to fight for you to come to me you know have ass like it's <laughs> it, come on now like no everything don't litter the way that you think it does because a person can dress up a message. You sitting here glor glorizing how I speak or the fact that she's holding women accountable, pitchfork, pitchfork, and it's like, nah, it just wasn't that deep. Like, the, the message just wasn't that deep. I just kind of, like, got to a point where I'm a straight shooter. I'm a straight shooter in real life. Oh, yeah. I always tell my friends to know me is to to know me is to understand me, not to love me. Like, to know me is to understand me. You ain't gonna always love me. That's okay. But as long as we got some understanding, we're gonna get somewhere. So mm -hmm. when I see a lot of the comments and it's like the whole one that I can't stand, and I'll be honest with you, I hate it so much, it's the protect black women or protect her. So let, let's, let's, let's talk about that real quick. I hate that comment. I hate it. And, and why? Let's talk about that for a little bit. I don't think it's real. Mm. Expound, please. The whole protect black women trope is a bunch of smoke. It's a bunch of smoke. Um, the idea that black women in America are in so much danger that we're just encountering violence or we're encountering such extreme measures of, you know, abuse at alarming rates absolutely not true mm. as a matter of fact when you look up the violence or um the femicide rate domestic violence against black women i think it's roughly it could be about 1800 women a year mm. it's not it's not high um mm. and even with that it that's not to say it's acceptable, but the numbers are definitely synonymous to like, they're roughly around the same amount as before. And even that number, don't quote me on the number. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, what I'm saying is, it's not an extremely alarming number that would mm -hmm. make you go, oh, this is like the violence in Chicago. Like, no, it's not like that. It's mm -hmm. not, it's far, far removed from that. For um, us, our, um, genocide rates will always be more detrimental to black men. Always. Mm -hmm. The men die the most. The men die by various reasons way more than us. Black women have a, a more uh, you have a greater chance at dying from like diabetes <laughs> than probably violence. And the thing is over 90% of any violence 
happens from a person that you know. You've mm -hmm. already been in proximity with them. So the idea or line, again, is that random men who are just mad or walking around attacking people, that's a very mm -hmm. far, like, it's a very small thing. Like there are not a lot of maniacs in the world. There, it's just, it's not a real idea that there are actually like real serial, mentally ill people who just go, "Hey, let me harm harm her because she's a random black woman." But again, that's the idea that's perpetuated. It's sad mm -hmm. to say, five black women did lose their life yesterday in Atlanta to a black man which would actually be a part of that random 10% act of violence. <clears throat> that is what that situation would happen yesterday. <clears throat> is the idea that they want to push behind and protect black women. But even when it came out, when Meg promoted it, she <clears throat> promoted it off of a lie. <clears throat> and she never did anything to back her stance. She never did any type of benefit concert for Protect Black Women. She's never mentioned the film side rate. She um, has not done anything for actual domestic violence, but she did do the online therapy. She does have uh, this website dealing with anxiety after her, yeah. after her last album. But in all honesty, what she troped behind was just appealing to the masses again to try and get people to emotionally appealed to what she was going through which it was simply a intimate partner situation and again it was based off of a lie the entire thing started as a lie so it was hard for a lot of people to just give her what she should have gotten as far as support or allyship from the beginning because she made a disingenuous so mm -hmm. when i hear take black women i don't really get into an uproar and when i see it in my comments i always want to correct it i'm safe <laughs> I go and correct it and it pisses me off because y'all sit here and y'all will get mad at the women who say protect black women but when it's a woman saying something that you want all of a sudden you're saying that women need protection that I need protection stop doing that because now you're keeping up the lie stop doing it because now you're making it seem as if those women are correct and then you're deliberately gaslighting them off the strength of, I'm just saying something that you like. I'm not actually in danger. You're basically gaslighting the situation. So mm -hmm. it's either one or the other from the people who are saying it. I know that protect black women is a lie. Mm -hmm. I know that. But we have to stop gaslighting the situation as if it's going to um, make everything just better or go away because they're basically mocking the very thing that could be a real reality for some yes and that's what i want to speak to you about because you said you you said you are safe so what are you doing to keep you safe i own a gun i used to be a correction officer i own other weapons um my um a friend of mine she is actually a self-defense um person and then i use my networking opportunities very much so well but i grew up in the country my mentality is a little different i'm rough i played in box with boys and stuff like that like that i the very boys that i was getting roughed up by i can call them those men now they have no problem mm. and um it was crazy because of it was this guy who was on um, my page about a week ago when I made a post and um, he was basically trying to disagree with me because I was like, men should stop coming to women half ass. Like if you, if you're not ready to be what she need and she a well to do together woman and she, you know, established in life, she don't need no fixer upper. That, that ain't how they go. Um, and he was basically trying to disagree with me and insinuate that I was saying I didn't need a man based off, you know, what I was saying. Of course, people, they interpretize things completely how they want to. They will completely miss the point. And he asked me, well, um, if if your tire needed change right now, could you do it? I was like, that's funny you say that I work in the automotive industry. And then he goes, well, if somebody broke into your house, are you going to be the person to get up and go investigate? Not knowing I live by myself. So I was like, um, 
I posted my gun. I was like, you want to be the person to find out? Like, let's test it. He, he was like, would you be able to shoot a human? Let's test it. Like, and, and I'm the type of person where, I mean, you can try it. And I'm just going to call the cleanup crew afterwards and get the police on the phone. They, <laughs> it don't make me no difference. But I do that. Like, I take initiative behind my protection. Because mm-hmm. I'm more afraid of being attacked by a white man than a black one. Mm-hmm. I ain't going to hold you. I am. And then I live in Texas. I'm far more afraid of being randomly attacked by a white man than a random black man. Mm. And that's even when me have a proximity to black men, but I can bet you my bottom dollar between my boyfriend here, my cousins here, my god brother here, ain't nobody gonna do nothing. Yeah. And I mean that. And that's what's up. That's 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 that community. You know what right, I'm saying? Right. And, and women should have that. They should have that. They it's should have some phone call for me. Yeah. It should be like that. You know, and unfortunately some women don't have that. And that's that's another show within itself. Right. Some women don't have that. And to touch on that, because that's the point that's brought up. Mm-hmm. Some women don't have that. But instead of us emphasizing what those women lack, let's emphasize how those women livelihoods are to determine if we actually should be concerned about that or not. Mm. let's let's emphasize that because the idea is that those women are without some form of protection but what we need to consider is on average every single day what person is just dealing with violence that's not in a correctional facility like that's that's an abnormality Mm -hmm. so is this something for us to get up in arms about considering even the women who don't have it is is there there are typically more men born than women but black men you know if you make it to 25 you OG yeah right <laughs> yeah let's let's switch gears a little bit i wanted to talk about what can men do to increase the marriage rate in the african american community from, from your vantage point okay i got my list <laughs> no, <I'm> just <laughs> i was about to say i didn't send you that question <laughs> <laughs> okay no and um it's co- so crazy because i think people think i have a bias i think people think i have a biased platform i don't even you see i give me a hell and i have a lot of you follow me so <laughs> oh yeah yeah I, I know what's up um for one i really think men need to be more intentional about how they maneuver and the first thing that i always hear these people say is the dick discipline dick discipline is the least of men's work there are more men who are virgins and less sexually active than women. We have to start disparaging and breaking down these narratives. Mm-hmm. Men don't need this big discipline. Men need intentionality. Men need more focus. Men also, in which a good friend of mine said this earlier today, and I never thought about it. So I'm a shout out to him for that because he's been holding me accountable for keeping on my fitness journey. But um, men are told what not to do with women, but they're not told what to do with women. Mm. so more men who such as yourself that are in relationships with women despite health or unhealth and I say that because you can learn from anybody you may not like the messenger but you may be able to receive the message so it is what it is you you may not like who it's coming from but the message may be spot on it may be meant for you Pastors have been hypocrites sitting in the pool pit and they gave you what you needed. I'm sorry. It, it is what it is. So I take that for what it is. That's how I was raised. Like you don't turn your you don't turn your your, your eyes away from nobody, mm-hmm. despite what their circumstances is. So nowadays you have like so many men that um based off of social media, especially the ones who are like socially awkward, who were never like the popular guy, who, you know, like the lame guy, the the not so attractive one or whatever the case may be, they are literally taught by other women, all I need is the money. If I go get the money, mm-hmm. everything goes going to fall into place. And I, I told one of um when we was having a conversation, I told a friend of mine, I said, you the reason why lame niggas created. And I told her just like that. 
And she kind of got, you know, a little taken aback. But I'm like, you the reason why lame niggas are created. Like, it's women like you. Because you'll sit there and you'll perpetrate a man having his financial status together. And then them, them the ones who receive the message, they go do it. And then they trick you. Because mm-hmm. them the ones you looking at. The ones who can go get the, the SRT or the scat pack or the mm-hmm. Hellcat. Them. The ones that can sit up there in the club and they're going to get the bottle of Casamigos or, you know, Azul or they're going to get the section and they're going to have their chains on and they've never had any type of real attention or authority. They've never known what it's actually felt like to have a girlfriend. They never had to date. And so they get that little validation and they get the status, the monetary status, and then they turn around and Netflix and chill you. Because all you told him he had to do was go get the money and tell him he had to give it to you. Mm. <laughs> so I definitely think like nowadays, especially when it comes to black men, like one thing, one of my biggest issues with black men is y'all don't care enough about shit that's being said about y'all. A lot of times it's not important because truth be told, y'all be out in the field doing the real work. So it's like, you know, yeah, you got your football coaches and you got your, you know, men who actually out there, but it's like, you're online, you're seeing this, like, it, it, at some point in time, you have to want to stand in front of your narrative because media has always said certain things. Media used to intentionally, like, make certain stories about Black men highlighted before we had the opportunity to get on TV. And now you got a phone in your hand and you control what's being said and what's happening. And a lot of times they don't. They don't, they don't care. They like, I ain't, I ain't got time to deal with this shit. You know, like I, it ain't really no big deal. So for me, it's like, like for one, y'all got to start pushing back on the message. You got to be vocal about it. Like, mm, that's not fair. Cause we're right here. And I recall this instance when this happened and this happened and this happened. And then not only that, you got to have intentionality because a lot of times now, if you are just letting whatever fly, then how can you expect for women to actually we we don't women don't have no discipline. We really don't know what we want. Mm. We don't we don't know what we want until we're shown it by a man. A lot of times women get influenced by a man. We don't know what we want until we get it from a man. We don't. Mm. We may say what we desire, but we don't know what we want. And I want black men to not only start pushing back on a narrative and being more intentional, but also learn how to see through the narrative of like what women actually do want, you know, what we do need, because I get it. Like now the messages are confusing. Don't approach a woman in public. You can't cat call her unless you handsome. That's the only time it's not harassment, unless you're handsome, you know, and, um, Preach. you know, it, 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 it's just, you have to, so, somewhere along the lines, there's going to have to be the old heads who get along with the young boys, the ones that go, I see you, nephew. Them going to have to be the ones that get along with the younger boys and go, this is what you do in order to cater to a woman. Because I, I would be more receptive to the Steve Harvey in the event that when he was when he's preaching his message is not for women to get more out of men, but more so for men to know how to better treat women without chastising. Mm-hmm. And that's not what he does, you know. So I would be more receptive to the Uncle Steve's if they were coming from that narrative, you know, or you know, because when you listen to Denzel, well, I I listen to Denzel talk about his wife, you know, and things like that. Or when you listen to how Barack and Michelle allude to each other when they're not around, the conversation is very different than what you get from Steve. Because Steve is more so, this is what you got to do as a man. And it's like, that message falling on deaf ears because these men are not even getting married, bro. So what are you talking about? These men are out here doing the very thing that your daughter doing. Bouncing around, around, around when things don't fit. Like, we're not getting to the nitty gritty. We're not getting to the meat of what should be done. So, those are my three things. I think men should be more intentional about how they go about dealing with women. I think men need to have to learn to get in front of their narrative because if you don't, then they're going to use us as a catalyst, which we see it, to push a certain narrative. And then I think men need to learn what to do with the woman as opposed to what not to do with her. Mm. 
I love that. That's that's powerful. I got two more questions before we go. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna ask you real quick. From seeing your parents' relationship, what did it teach you about marriage? Hey, you don't give up on people. Mm -hmm. That's that I, that that's that the best answer I can give you. I don't quit. I don't quit. And that's something that I've if I can be candid, that's like something I've had the hardest time like dealing with my, my own relationship with. I don't quit. He watched his parents be married, but they didn't stay together. <laughs> so, you know, it's like, and it's crazy because they're the only, you know, they're the only, he's the only child that they shared and he's not in the marriage. So it's like, mm. I don't quit on people. I understand to be forgiving. I understand to be remorseful. I understand to be, um, you know, to let people be human. I and that. I don't just practice that in the intimate partnership. Mm. I do that in my friendships. I'm really big on preserving people. But in the adverse of that, I bet heavy. I'm very protective about who gets to know me. I'm very protective and secure and stable in who I allow around me. So I may like you, we may chit chat, we may, you know, kiki and have a great time together. We may bond, mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean you're in my close circle. And I'm very meticulous about that. Mm -hmm. I have a very hard time losing people. I take it to heart and I don't quit on people. Mm -hmm. So we ended and it was on my accord. You forced my hand. You made me quit on me. Mm -hmm. So that's what my parents taught me through every up, every down, every day wasn't happy. There was some days that all they got out of each other was a, hey, I'm home. And he went to one room, she went to another. Mm -hmm. Then later on, probably about two hours later, food ready, you can go eat, <laughs> you know, or here go your plate. It was, that was it. It didn't require all of this cold dependency that we don't allow for our partner to just be expressive and have their own individualism. And, you know, it, it I didn't see arguing. Mm -hmm. They did, and I'm sure. Of course. Kept us out of grown folks' business. That was their business. And now what I see is online, women will have an issue with their father and how he treated their mother and was a good dad to her, but you're more so concerned about the man that he was to your mother. And I'm like, you don't realize how those are two different relationships. That's not your business. Mm. That's powerful. I love it. Yeah. To be an empath, to, to not give up, like that's a special individual because people, they give up in a New York minute. Like you can have an argument with somebody. I'm gone. I'm going to go swipe left. I'm going to go swipe. I'm done. <laughs> we'll go out at somebody else. It like as if they got the answer. Hard. Because that was something that I had to learn about myself. And um, honestly, I, I have very deep and thorough and um, I open conversations with my partner. So him and I have talked about that. That has been a constant conversation. But one thing that I do keep true, I try to allow people to be human. I'm 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 oh I'm not okay with you disappointing me, but I know it's gonna happen because you're simply a man. Yep. You're simply a man, and I'm made a man's image. So I know I'm gonna disappoint you too. I'm not gonna always be the idea of who you think I am. And that means not necessarily showing my true colors, but in these growing pains with you, you're gonna see a new level of who I am that might not resonate with you some days. But don't quit on me. We gonna yeah. be back on the same page. Mm, that's that's beautiful. I love that. We need to hear that more often. Last question. There's no right or wrong answer. Is it easier to love yourself or love someone else? Love someone else. Why? Because when you love someone else, you can love an idea of them. You can create whoever you think that they are in your head. And a lot of times we will blind ourselves from what's actually there but to sit with who you are 
to sit and address things that trigger you, to sit and acknowledge like your bad behaviors and say, this is a flaw of mine, but I'm going to embrace it anyhow. I don't want to get rid of it. That, that takes a lifestyle. That's not something that you do in two or three days. But we can go out and spend three weeks together and I can develop a sense of attachment to you and emotion to you because I'm seeing something in you that gives me that. Mm -hmm. Until I sit with myself and I have to sit with myself, I ain't gonna really love myself. Especially not how I love you. It's it's easier to love other people. Yeah. I hear you. That's what's up. This has been a phenomenal show. We've been we've been kicking it too almost an hour and a half, almost two hours. <laughs> this has been a phenomenal show. Let everyone, not as if they don't know, but <laughs> let, <laughs> let everybody know how they can get in touch. There's still people who don't know where to find me, please. <laughs> um, yeah, y'all, y'all can, y'all know I'm from the country, so sometimes <laughs> it come out when I get comfortable with people. I'm not always in my office, corporate office voice. But um, if you would like because I ain't going to force your hand. You ain't got to come bother me. <laughs> you can find me on Twitter at underscore Paradise Paris one In every single bio, so in that bio, you will find my link tree, which is linked to all my other pages. My current TikTok is underscore Paradise Paris. My Instagram is Paradise Paris. My Facebook is Paradise Paris. And my YouTube is just Landon in Paris. My big O is Paradise Paris. Y'all can find me on all of those platforms. I am there. I am active every single day. And I appreciate everybody who supports me, even when we don't agree. Don't follow me to agree because your turn to be pissed off is coming. I promise you. She's speaking facts. <laughs> I'm going to piss you off. If you follow me, I'm on your side till I ain't. That is actually my brand motto. I'm on your side until I ain't. Mm, better breach. <laughs> Brave Hearts community, you heard it. You heard it here. Connect with Paris. She is. She has phenomenal content. Of course, and like I said, she's went viral so many times. So her, one of her videos probably popped up on your feed anyway. So just go ahead and hit the follow button. Hit the subscribe yeah, button. Actually, the current video, I think you can let these people go. <laughs> <laughs> the current video is currently circulating. So we finna see. Oh yeah, I'm a, I'm a, uh, I'm a comment. I, I I'm looking forward to checking that out. Brave Arts community, if you are watching this video, make sure you subscribe. Make sure you share this with someone because you never know somebody might need it. I realize that if you can get in people's uh, chat, if you can get in their little their little chat uh, where they um, send the uh, the text messages, what is it called a group chat? If you if your content can get in them group chats, you can really experience some growth. Um, that's my little hack for today, as if I got it all together. But anyway, make sure you connect with Paris. Also, if you listen to this via podcast, make sure that you hit the subscribe button as well and leave a rating and review. We'd love to hear from you. By doing so, it puts you in a drawing for a free Amazon gift card. Who doesn't like free stuff? <laughs> this is Sean Heineman with special guests. Paradise Paris. All right, Brave Hearts community.